Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Holistic Human Performance Podcast. I'm your host, Jenna Bradshaw, and today I have a special guest, Natalie Gargiulo. She is a fellow cancer survivor, and her story is especially unique because she healed herself holistically of cancer. And of course, I had to have her on and tell her story because it's unbelievable. Um, And to give you guys hope, anyone who's struggling and you only think you have one way of doing it, we met through a mutual friend and we got coffee together. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have you on the podcast to share and tell your story because other people need to know this to, you know, get hope. And um, it's cool because it led her to another area of, of, you know, creating her own business. And without further ado, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited. <laughs> you too. Uh, welcome. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Why don't you tell the listeners your story, your journey, and kind of, you know, take us through that process of, you know, how you literally healed yourself holistically of cancer. Yes. So I was a single mom working full time. I had two little boys and was exhausted. Naturally, moms in general, married, not married, however you do it, it's it's an exhausting but rewarding job, but it's exhausting. Um, and so I didn't think too much about the fact that I was exhausted. Um, never thought about eating clean or you know any of that. I ate fruits and vegetables like regular people, but I also had a lot of McDonald's and you know, junk because I was working, running my kids through their sports or whatever they they were doing at the time. And, you know, like most moms rushing, feeling exhausted. So I finally went to a doctor and was telling the doctor how, you know, I've been exhausted lately, like literally stopping before I walk into a store and sitting in my car and asking my kids to put on a movie for a few minutes so that I can get a 15 minute nap in because I just couldn't move another second. So sheer exhaustion, you know, but that was really the only thing. I had some slight nausea, but not enough for me to think anything of it. So I go to the doctor and I get a routine uh, mammogram. In the mammogram, they had done a sonogram and Again, just, just, I was just there for a routine exam, but just mentioning, you know, I've been really exhausted lately. And she already knew at that moment that she saw something, you know, uh, in the sono because actually they didn't find anything in the breast. They found a lump under my arm. So she instantly said, you have cancer, even though they didn't really know exactly yet. And I was, uh, needless to say, shocked and, and, really didn't know if you had asked me years before, what would you ever do if you got cancer? I would have said, I'd get chemo. That's what you do, right? But for whatever the reason, you know, I I really wasn't too keen on it. I instantly started doing my research, spoke to a lot of people, looked on the internet, and then went through a series of tests and terrible doctors with no bedside manner. The first doctor that I sat with Uh, instantly said to me, as soon as I sat down, he opened up his book. He goes, well, you have cancer. You're going to get chemo and you're going to lose all your hair. And I was like, oh. And when I was so taken back, obviously, and left there crying and very upset, he said to me, oh, you're right. Are you okay? You want me to prescribe something for that? And uh, that didn't sit right with me either. So as we kept doing tests, no one could really tell me where the cancer was. No one could find it. They did um, take a needle biopsy from the lymph node and said, okay, we know now that it's breast cancer, but we can't find it anywhere. So that was making me question everything. Like, how can you not find it? So fast forward, went through a bunch of tests. Finally, a doctor said, okay, we found it. So they did a lumpectomy and they removed more lymph nodes. And when I woke up, they said, good and bad news. Good news is we got it all. We got all the lymph nodes. Bad news is 
it wasn't the only cancer. You had two forms of breast cancer in the one breast. So I was like, okay, so what happened to that one? They said, well, we still can't find that one. So I went home and did some thinking and mind you, this, the original um, day that I found out about it was I believe May of 2015. Um, this was now at this point, gosh, I had to be September, October. And this whole time they were like, hurry up, hurry up. You have to go fast. You need chemo, you need radiation. You should remove both breasts. It's gonna spread. And I already let time go by and things really weren't progressing like they were saying. Just so now- of, Sorry to cut you off, but just out yeah. of curiosity, yeah. how long ago was this? 2015. Okay. And I had lobular carcinoma. I'm reading it because I don't even know what I had. And most right. people that have breast cancer are like, well, what kind? And I'm like, I don't know. I got to read it. I don't, I don't remember because I didn't heal that way. So right. I had ductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma all in one breast. Okay. So right around Thanksgiving time, I had done all of my research and decided I was going to go holistic. Um, I researched a lot of people. Um, Crispy cancer was one of them, and crazy sexy cancer was another woman. That uh, Chris Carr, the, correct. These are the two top. Whenever I talk to anyone who's like gone the yeah. holistic route, these are the two top people, and I'm so grateful for that because they like yes. really helped to pave the way they to get more of a normal. Yes, their stories are phenomenal, and it's. The more you do it, the more you're like, well, of course, yes, that makes so much sense. But when you tell someone that hasn't been through it, it's like, you're insane. And trust me, all of my friends and family are like, please don't do this. Please do what the doctors say. You're crazy. But it just didn't feel right to do it. I was always kind of sickly. I was always that person that would go to a doctor and would say, I feel like this, this, and this is happening. And they would be like, no, it's not. And then I would go back maybe a month later and guess what it was. So I always kind of knew my body, but I guess just was busy with life and didn't push forward to be like, you know, damn it, I, I do know. So stop telling me that. And I just kind of accepted whatever they said all the time. Yeah. So, so this time around, I wasn't accepting it. <clears throat> I followed uh, Chris Wark more than anything because I just really liked his story. He had he was 26 years old when he actually yeah. had cancer. A lot of stories say 19. He was 26. Mm -hmm. uh, he had stage three colon cancer. He had a third, three thirds of his large intestines removed. Mm -hmm. And when he woke up out of surgery, they offered him a sloppy joe, and he thought that was so bizarre. And they're like, "It's fine. Eat whatever you want." And a lot of cancer doctors say that eat whatever you want you're going through all of this it's fine have the ice cream when you go home treat yourself but the truth of the matter is cancer feeds off of sugar and acidity when you cut those things out of your your intake you're starving the cancer and that's exactly what i did yep. um not to mention stress is a big deal what you tell yourself is a big deal um, people don't really understand that either, that if you tell yourself, I am this, I am that, your, your body believes it and it starts to take on that form. And I never knew how much this existed until I started going through this. So I started, like I said, cutting out all sugar. At the time, that's what I did. Um, Chris Wark did not do that. He did eat fruit. I only ate berries because berries of every kind are high in antioxidants and low in sugar. I ate, excuse me, only organic food. I started drinking alkaline water. Um, and question, did you, did you go, because I know his protocol, Chris work, did you go 100% vegan? Like, did you follow that protocol to like a T or did you kind of, because I know also you worked with an, a holistic doctor. So how did that so, go? I did not go vegan. I went mostly vegan. 
Um, I still ate meat, but it was all organic. Anything yeah. that I put in my body was organic. I no longer went out to restaurants. And this is not to say that someone that eats clean could never again go to a restaurant or do anything mm -hmm. wrong ever again. That's not true. Um, right. When I was healing, however, I was diligent um, because I had cancer and I had two little kids. So yes, I was diligent, um, just ate organic foods. The holistic doctor that I went to uh, believed that it was fine as long as it was organic. Agree with the fact, because I'm a huge proponent of like eating protein to like fuel the immune system, considering your immune system is made of amino acids. So yeah. for me, like, I'm, I'm always curious because I've heard people, you know, everyone's like, oh, like you have to go vegan if you want to, you know, never get cancer again. Like if you're going through the healing process, but personally, I don't believe that. And there's, you know, there's research on, on protein that can also prove that and the effects that yeah. the positive effects that it has on the body in the healing stages. So I was curious what you did because, you know, obviously people who follow like Chris Wark's protocol, like they went 100% vegan. Um, some stayed vegan, some, you know, obviously went back to lean meats. Uh, so I was curious and I'm, I'm glad that actually you eat protein because that was something that I never took out of my personal lifestyle and, and diet. So um, that's really interesting. Um, it's, you... it's all connected though, because it's not just about food. You don't get cancer just because of food. You know, it's environmental stress. It's, it's stress itself. It's what you tell yourself. I remember right. I, I worked for spas, right? So I'm an esthetician. I do skincare treatments. And at the time, the spa that I was working for, we had a, a gentleman that was a massage therapist and he was really big on all this stuff. And, you know, I kind of thought he was a little kooky, but I loved him. He was adorable. And when I went through this, he goes, think about whatever you want to think about that's healing, standing over you, healing you. And I was like, I don't know, a little fairy, a little fairy princess that's sprinkling fairy dust on me. He goes, great, fine, <laughs> whatever works, do that. And I would lay in bed and I would close my eyes and I would just picture, you know, all the dust all over me and it was healing me. And as silly as that sounds, it really works for you when you tell yourself something, it truly, truly works. It so works and there's research that proves it. Yes. So between being kind to yourself, cutting out the stress, moving your body, eating clean, it is all connected, cutting out the toxins. You can't cut them all out. I remember when I went through this, um, freaking out about taking a shower. I'm like, I can't even take a bath anymore. How do I, how do I take a shower? The water coming down is going to kill me. And you, obviously you can't do that, but right. the more you cut out, the better, you know, that's exactly so, right. It took about, I can't remember exactly, uh, four to six months, which again, pr people are probably like, what do you mean? You don't remember exactly, but it was such a, a calm experience that I went through. You know, it wasn't like, oh my God, I got cancer. Oh my God, I got to lose my hair. I've got to go through these treatments. I'm going to be sick. It wasn't like that. If anything, it was probably the most chill, calm thing I've ever done because I learned how to meditate. I learned how to do yoga and stretch and relax. You know, there, there is, there's just so many things connected with it. I ate clean. I lost weight. I looked good. <laughs> you you know? literally changed your entire lifestyle entire lifestyle. And it wasn't easy, you know, believe me, when I did this, when I started, it was like a few days before Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving, there's all that good food there. All, I mean, obviously the food was all organic. That wasn't a problem, but I didn't eat any of, of the desserts, which was hard. And then it was Christmas and Valentine's day. My birthday came around. Um, I did cheat on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> the holistic doctor said on your birthday, you can have like, a little. <laughs> but within five months, I think it was five months. I went and he said, okay, you're doing good. It's, it's I don't long, see any cancer. How long was the process from, you said 2015 is when they found and then how, so it was five to six months. No, because it was five to six months from November. I, I found out in, in May. Mm. And in, in May, I did start eating better, but I really didn't know 
what I was doing. Like when I, when I was in the heart of it, people would be like, just have a salad at the, at the restaurant. It's fine. I'm like, okay, but that salad is filled with carcinogens and toxins on it. I want, I don't want to eat that. I want to eat my clean organic stuff, you know? Yeah. So I started in May eating better and, and reading and doing whatever I could drinking alkaline water, but it wasn't until, um, November when I met with my holistic doctor that I really started going forward. And I'd say around May, I mean, I kept going back to him every month, but around right. May, he was like the no more, no signs of cancer. And the first day I met him, he did say, okay, you have cancer. Yes, it's true. I see it, but I can help you just do everything. I say. Yeah. And uh, I still see him to this day. Um, now I only see him every six months or so mm. and I get blood work done. He's got cancer markers on me mm. and, um, and everything's great every time. That's incredible. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. You had so much courage, like going through that. I mean, people really get freaked out and they go through fear mode and they're like, well, I need to do all these other things. And like, you know, what if this doesn't happen quick enough and maybe they get symptoms and they're feeling like, oh no, the cancer's back. And they would yes. go get conventional treatment. But, and listen, to each his own, obviously. Like, but you, it, what I really love is the fact that you listen to your intuition and your gut yeah. because you knew that chemotherapy was not going to be the route for you. You just like intuitively knew that. So- that's exactly it right there. I, I knew that it wasn't going to be for me. And if I did it, like everyone says, you're so brave, but I, it's not that I was brave. It's not like I was like, oh my God, I'm so scared to do this. God, I hope it works. I mean, maybe a little bit in the beginning, especially when I started to detox, when I was eating really clean and I didn't feel well, but then I researched and I looked and it said, if you're in the middle of detoxing and you don't feel well, that's your body detoxing, keep going. And yep. I, that gave me the courage to keep going through, but I never at any point felt like, you know, I'm so courageous to do this. If anything, I felt like I was chicken to do chemo or losing my breast or losing my hair or being sick every day. That's what scared me. This seemed like a piece of cake and it was <laughs> in, in comparison for sure. I mean, Absolutely. you do go you go through detox, uh, uh, the sugar, it's really hard and you crave it. And I remember every month I went to that doctor and every month I would say, when can I eat normal again? And he would look at me like, I mean, try to make this your normal because this is so much better for you. And I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah, sure. But when, when can I have a glass of wine? Like, and after a few months, I really didn't crave that stuff anymore. And do I now indulge? Sometimes I do, of course. Um, but all of my food at home is organic and I, I am organic, holistic as much as humanly possible. And through the years, um, you know, when it, when I first did it, everyone kept saying, you know, you should write a book. You should really do this. And I'm like, who am I? Like Chris Wark wrote a book. So he already did it. I don't need to do it. And I don't need to put myself out there. And I was so busy being a single mom and having all these other things going on. My mom was ill herself. Um, I didn't think that I could do anything like that. But now, as of the recent months, I would say the past at least six months or so, I really started to think about it. And I don't know about writing a book, but I've opened up my own space and I'm teaching others how to take care of their skin holistically and, and be holistic and, and be clean. And I'm definitely going to move forward in that fashion and, and be with like-minded people and, and go after that. I love that because you absolutely should. I mean, when you told me your story, I was like, uh, you need to come share your story on my podcast yeah. because it gives other people the hope. Yes. It's like, it's like when they broke, you know, the, the five minute mile, like that was a huge milestone. Right. Yeah. And then it started to get broken record after record after record because one person did it. And then it gave that yeah. belief to other people. Right. That's and it. People don't, they don't know. And when, when you tell them it takes a while for them to really open up to it, you know, because they're like, the doctors went to school, they know what they're talking about. So I'm not, I'm going to listen to them. 
I have a lot of clients that come to me. I mean, because how many people in Long Island get cancer? Seems like so many people come to me and they have, or they had, and I think most have listened to my story and, and try to go that, that route and it helped them, but there's many that say no and they refuse. And I'd like to mention as well, my ex-husband had cancer himself about two years after I had cancer and it was in his blood. And so he wouldn't do what I did. He said, I'm not doing that. It's in my blood. I'm not playing games. And I didn't fight it. Because if, if you don't believe in it and someone's going to push you to do it, then that's not good either in your brain. Because then you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to die because I'm doing this and I'm not doing what the doctors say. So I didn't push it, but I, I stood by him. Um, and at one point, the doctor said, your port is infected. We have to stop the chemo and remove the port. So they did that and sent him home and said, let's wait a couple of weeks and let that heal. So when he came home, I said, what do you have to lose now? Can you just do what I did? Just, I'm just telling you to eat right. That's all I'm telling you. It's, it's don't eat cookies and nonsense and eat right. And he did. And when he went back to the doctor to get checked again, they found no trace of cancer. And he had leukemia, by the way. Wow. Wow. So, and all those years, people were telling me like, you know, you got lucky. You're very lucky. It was just a fluke that you healed yourself. And I was like, no, it's not. So this was so great. That I was like, ha, <laughs> it was not a fluke. And there's some truth to what I've been saying clearly, because look at what happened with him with leukemia. He cured himself as well. And to this day, he's still healthy. Wow. And I had leukemia too. I had it as a yeah. child. And again, like, you know, my this was in 1995 when I was being treated, but my parents didn't know any better. Like of they, course. They, I'm their child. They're like, you know, but I think yeah. like when you, when you get to a point where you're an adult and you can like make your own decisions, right? Like yeah. educate yourself, do the research, trial and error. Like, I'm curious, you have children, right? Yes. How did you, how did you, st like, once you changed and once this shifted, like, how did you approach that with your kids? Like, did you change their eating style? Did you change, like, in general, how did, how did it work as like a family unit? So while it was happening, I mean, <clears throat> they were eating all organic because that's what I bought. So, and it, it didn't matter. They, nothing was different. It's just the meat and the food that I bought was clean. They didn't know any different. Do they now eat like crap <laughs> as adults my older son does he moved out on his own and I talk to him all the time my younger son is a little bit better but both of them um I think as they get older they're 19 and 22 right now I am pretty positive that as they get older they're going to switch over because they were raised with me and they know so much I mean just the other day I went with my son um he asked me, he lives with his dad and he asked me to get him some food. And when I took him, he would pick one thing up and I would go, no, look, read the ingredients. This is, what is this? Right. Why does it have all of these ingredients? I should just have what it is. And, um, I think that he, he definitely listens and I'm sure that when they get older, they're going to be better, but I agree. That's yeah. super important because, you know, yeah. I think that if we can, also just attack it from like a family unit level where it's like we're already teaching yes. kids to eat right that's already half of the battle oh you know? god yes i wish i could do it wish i could do it all over again because when i was a mother when they were little i could not wait to make that to like bake them brownies and watch them like oh look how good that is I wish I could do it all over again. I really do. But it is what it is. And I can it only go forward. Yeah. And teach them better from, from, you know, that day forward. And I have, and, and they do know better and they will, as they get older, definitely use it in practice. I think. Yeah. As long yeah. as you listen, like you led by example and now yeah. they're adults, it's up to them to figure out like, okay, mom literally went through cancer and healed herself without doing chemotherapy. Like that's pretty profound. So, you know, so I feel like that's all they know. I feel like that's all they know. So I don't know that they're 
I, I would have to ask them, you know, that's interesting. I would like to ask them, like, what do you think about what I did? They'd probably be like, what? Doesn't everybody do that? You know what I mean? Like, that's- You should ask. Know. Mom and dad healed holistically, <laughs> you know? I am so curious. You should ask because- I will. Just like from the, the child standpoint, like what- how did that make them think? And like, what do they think of what's going on now in the world with like big pharma and like all this other stuff, yeah. you know? So that's so interesting. Well, my younger son for sure um, doesn't like taking anything. So when he's ill, he will not take anything. If someone offers, he'd rather heal like organically. So I definitely think that it must've affected him. I mean, both of them, if you think about it, my ex-husband and I sat them down and be like, you know, mom has cancer and I don't know what went on in their head, but the next week's following not much changed, except I got better and better and healthier and healthier. So, you know, they, I'm sure that they, they've got to realize what a wonderful thing it is. That's awesome. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Well, are there any words of wisdom you would like to leave the listeners before we kind of wrap up? Don't wait until you get sick. Do not wait. Move your body. Eat good food made from the earth. That's what it, your body is meant to heal itself as long as you feed it properly. Your car needs gas to go. Your body needs good food. It needs nutrients. Don't wait till you get sick. Just enjoy life. Don't make yourself miserable. Don't overthink. Oh my God, I'm, I don't want to eat this. I'm going to get sick. But eat clean, move your body and think happy thoughts, do yoga, meditate, sleep good, all those good things. It's easy. It really is. A simple life. I'm about yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> Where can people find you? Uh, organically Yours Aesthetics is my business and it is in Amityville, New York, right on Broadway. And I do holistic facials and I teach people how to take care of their skin organically, holistically. I love it. Thank you yeah. so, so much for coming on and sharing your story. Thank you for having me. I love it. All right. We'll talk soon. Everyone like, share, subscribe. If you found this helpful, share with others you think would need and benefit. Uh, you can check this out on YouTube or uh, anywhere you could find podcasts. Until the next time, bye.